who uh, is a uh, professor uh, there and was going to talk to us about selecting ideal ECMO CPR patients, something that we've alluded to uh, in, in many of the talks so far. Uh, so thank you very much, and I'll hand you over to Professor Ender. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm Tomoyuki Endo. I'm an emergency physician in Sendai City, Japan. It's a great honor to be here and to have an opportunity to talk about ECMO CPL on this Euro Health Virtual Congress. I'm really grateful to Dr. Shinjiro Takeda. He is one of the best Japanese experts and he gave me this opportunity. I've been de dedicated to eCPL practice since 2006 and eCPL simulation training since 2013. In Japan, many emergency physicians and cardiologists are responsible for the entire eCPL process, including post-cardiac arrest care. Of course, I'm one of them. On behalf of Japanese enthusiastic eCPL practitioners, I'll be talking about selecting the ideal ECMO CPR patient. I have no conflict interest about my presentation. This is eCPL history in Japan. Notably, Japan had the universal insurance coverage system that affected nationwide implementation of eCPR in Japan. eCPR reports increased in 1990s. In 2000, Dr. Ken Nagao reported a remarkable result of eCPR combined with PCI and hypothermia therapy. The result encouraged Japanese emergency physicians and cardiologists interventionists to start the same program of their own. I personally started eCPR program in 2006 at the previous hospital, and in 2008 to 2012, uh, Save J study was performed under the strong leadership of Dr. Tetsuya Sakamoto, and I joined in the study as eCPR group. After the Save J study, eCPR became much more common in Japan, and many tertiary emergency care centers can provide eCPR for OHA. This is a case I experienced about 13 years ago. 20 years old young man witnessed refractory BF. He received multiple shocks, but no risk obtained. Blood gas analysis showed that the uh, very low pH and very high lactate. Is he eCPR candidate? So there are uh, several points to be focused on about the CPR, such as age, witness, bystander CPR, and blood gas analysis. So let's see what the ECMO CPR is really about and what the idea of ECMO system is. I think that the definitive reason of EC ECMO for resuscitation is uh, it can keep the brain, especially brain and the body alive, and gain time to fix the cause and it can make body temperature control very easy. It can then make them possible, and of course, the earlier, the better for the brain. This is the overview of eCPR for OHA. Usually in OHA patients, we have much less information at first and need some time to be transported to ER or cath lab. We have to do eCPR under extremely uncertain possibility. But if the chain of survival is seamless and the every step is perfectly done, the patient's brain will be alive. There is no time to lose and every step should be organized. This is the overview of e CPR for IHCA, basically the same flow as OHCA. MET or RRT activity should include the multidisciplinary eCPR system in the hospital. In order to provide eCPR, local resuscitation stakeholders need to establish the system collaboratively, like this. So in my city, um, this uh, local emergency medical system is not established yet. So we, uh, I'm trying to teach the emergency technician to transport the patient. If the VF is refractory, the patient should be transported to the ECPR capable center. So 
So let's look at the OHA inclusion and exclusion criteria in major eCPR studies. Uh, the most of uh, today's speakers are uh, engaged in these studies. Wow. Uh, I think the, ah, uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, the first of all, look at the Save J study in Japan. The inclusion criteria is initial VFVT, age from 20 to 75, cardiac arrest on hospital arrival with or without the hospital risk within 45 minutes from the EMS call or the onset of cardiac arrest to the hospital arrival. No risk at least during the first 15 minutes after hospital arrival. This criteria means that the 60 minutes will be the upper limit from collapse to ECMO initiation. This is the CHIA trial in Australia. Also initial BFVT, age from 18 to 65. Cardiac etiology is suspected. Collapse to CPR is less than 10 minutes. And the mechanical CPR device are available. And the cardiac arrest is persistent for 30 minutes. This is Paris Samu, uh, the hospital eCPR system. Patients should be witnessed age less than 70, perhaps the CPR time less than equal five minutes. Signs of life during CPR are recognized such as pupillary reflex, spontaneous movement, spontaneous breathing, and unsuccessful issues more than 30 minutes. Maybe this is changed to 20 minutes now. So this is the arrest trial in Minnesota, uh, which is the first RCT ever about the CPL. Initial VFVT, age from 80 to 75. Now loss of the three shocks, Lucas applicable body, and seen to ED arrival is less than equal 30 minutes. This is a ROCA trial in Michigan. Witness arrest or in initial VFVT, age from 18 to 70, non traumatic etiology. Predicted arrival time of ECPR capable hospital within time frame is specified. Persistent cardiac arrest. This is the Prague OHA study. Uh, so, age 18 to 65, witnessed cardiac cause. Minimum five minute issues without sustained risk and GCS under eight. And this is the study in Vienna. Uh, initial VFVT, age 80 to 75, witnessed cardiac cause, in immediate initiation of e CPR, no risk after 50 minutes of SRS. This is the inception trial in Netherlands. Of course, initialism of PFVT or AED administered age 80 to 70 witnessed with bystander BRS and no risk. The last one is sub 30 trial in London. Dr. Simon is uh, leading this trial. I, I think that this study is aimed to elucidate the efficacy of very early ECMO CPR within 30 minutes from crops. So patients should be witnessed age 18 to 65, perhaps to CPR time less than three minutes. And the, let's look at the factors for eCPR eligibility. These are the critical factors to select ideal eCPR candidate. Um, I'd like to show the factors from one to six as schematic image. ECPR candidate is usually initial BFBT, refractory to multiple shocks, age under 75 in adult, witnessed, and with early bystander CPR, and estimated time from crops to ECMO within 60 minutes. And uh, some uh, specific uh, pathophysiology etiology is included. And the uh, best possible candidate is shown in red. Some special conditions, uh, yeah, best possible 
showing this red is the best candidate. So this expands the area to delayed or no bystander CPR. Uh, still, there will be some patients in this, in this area. This expands to unwitnessed refractory VFPT patient. I think this criteria matches arrest trial if Lucas applied. And then this expands even more to almost all refractory BFBT, irrespective of witness and bystander CPR. This is almost the same as the Save J study. So let's think about the witness and early bystander CPR. <clears throat> this is the schematic image of the relationship between time and oxygen consumption. If the patient is witnessed but no CPR more than 15 minutes, that patient would lose coronary and cerebral oxygen reserve in the end. <clears throat> and finally, cause irreversible hypoxic brain injury. Survival is unlikely in this patient. If the patient is witnessed and get early bystander CPR, he or she can keep cerebral oxygen reserve at high level and survival is highly likely. I think cerebral regional saturation, RSO2 or news, news may be the surrogate marker of cerebral oxygen reserve. If the patient is witnessed but delayed bystander CPR more than three minutes, he or she loses cerebral oxygen reserve moderately, but still survival is likely. If the patient is witnessed but longer delayed bystander CPR, like 10 minutes, he or she loses much more cerebral oxygen reserve and survival becomes, becomes less likely. If the patient is unwitnessed but get early detection and bystander CPR, he or she can keep cerebral oxygen reserve moderately and survival may be likely. If the patient is a witness and get delayed detection and bystander CPR, he or she loses cerebral oxygen reserve significantly and survival is less likely. If the witness and the early bystander CPR is mandatory, that leads to less per patient included and get high survival rate and less actual survival number. On the other hand, if witness and early bystander CPR is not mandatory, that leads to more patients included, get less survival rate and the more actual survival number. There is no answer yet. This issue should be discussed in the local eCPR system. This shows the limited effect of prolonged high quality CPR for refractory VF. 30 minutes and 60 minutes of low flow time are the critical point to consider eCPR candidate. This showed, limit, uh, this showed the final assessment before cannulation. You have to consider good outcome indicators such as signs of life, RSO2 if possible, and poor outcome indicators such as blood gas analysis and check contraindications by history, physical findings, and ultrasound findings. And lastly, obtain informed consent if possible. Going back to the first young man, he had both good indicator and bad indicator, like high lactate. PA ECMO and hypothermia was performed and diagnosed idiopathic PF after neurological recovery, CPC1 and he walked away hospital after ICD implantation. Uh, if we widen the inclusion criteria, we will get lower survival rate. It may consume ECMO device and ICU resources. Patients of poor neurological, neurological outcome will increase and lead to loss of provider's motivation. On the other hand, it may increase organ donor. If we narrow the inclusion criteria, we will get higher survival rate. We may lose some viable patient to be rescued with ECMO. 
the number of candidates will decrease and the providers cannot get enough experience to be familiar with this process. Think about benefit of ECPR from the patient's family's point of view. They are based on my personal experiences. Sudden death without any possible treatment could be the worst memory for the family, especially when the patient is young. ECPR gives them several hours to days to understand and accept what happened to their loved ones. Family members would have to appreciate the highly advanced therapy given to their loved ones. And if the patient had the will to donate organs, ECPR can be the bridge to the organ transplantation. Sorry. There are some other factors to influence the ECPR health insurance system, maturity of local ECPR system. Minnesota is one of the greatest models we want to achieve. And priority of ECMO use VA or VB, especially in this COVID era. In summary, there is no definitive inclusion criteria of ECPR yet. Many factors should be considered in a very limited time to select the ideal ECMO patient, ECPR patient. To widen or narrow, the inclusion criteria may depend on the local ECPR system and the available resources. ECPR may give family some time to understand and accept what happened to their loved one in terms of grief care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for uh, uh, that measured talk. Um, moving on, I think uh, I just remind everybody after the next talk, uh, we'll move into a discussion uh, and I'd invite everybody to submit. Uh,